welcome to Chinese TV. Inspiring people across the planet to be a little kinder and a little more gentle with each other. Delivering inspirational TV, one story at a time, from my lounge to yours. I'm your host, Tony Lontis. Good evening, uh, America. Good afternoon, Australia. And welcome to everyone else listening across the world. A big shout out to those people listening in Germany and Russia today. Now, you're listening to the Everyday Business Show with your host, Tony Lontis. And our intro is my old intro. And it's a little bit teary to see my beautiful white goat, Jasper, on the screen. He passed last year and I'd forgotten how gorgeously fluffy he was. Anyway, this is the Everyday Business Show. And if you're listening live on LinkedIn, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, uh, just remember that Payo is live listening and will take your comments, answer your questions, and give you the links for anything that we talk about today, in particular, our special offers and links to our amazing guest. If you're watching the show post live, then the links and information will appear attached to this this show in the show notes and if you're watching on binge tv networks in the usa thank you for tuning in once again to everyday business a reminder too that you can jump onto tonylontis.com and look under the co-hosts and guests tab on the website and you will also find Chantal girardi's facebook strategies uh, information and the links to everything about Chantelle so that you can connect with her after the show. Now, before I introduce you to Chantelle, obviously today we're going to be talking about Facebook and how to get fast and free results on Facebook. But here's what you need to know about Chantelle before I introduce you to her. Over the past decade, Chantelle has worked with loads of people and businesses to help them integrate their Facebook profiles into their business and life. Now, Chantelle has worked in the fitness industry, beginning as a part-time personal trainer, working around three small children after emigrating from South Africa to the Gold Coast in 2008. Now, initially she worked with uh, for other people, but had an entrepreneurial spirit, which saw her seeing how she could improve on her current model of delivering personal training. And that led to her opening her first fitness business in 2010. Chantel then branched out uh, from opening to opening rather a health wellness and fitness center to support other professionals in the industry and her biggest challenge was that she didn't know what she didn't know beginning in a new business meant Chantel had to start over again over and over and over finding new clients without a marketing budget she was overwhelmed confused and worn out and Chantel didn't realize how to use social media effectively and couldn't afford someone to help her. Now, Facebook became Chantel's go-to platform and the biggest bonus of having to start over and over and over again was that Chantel learnt how to not do things. And after winning the Empowered Mums Award in 2015 for her work helping other health, wellness and fitness businesses, Chantel began to invest in learning how to better coach business owners on how to use Facebook. Now, Facebook is a platform the world over. It's massive. And so Chantel saw lots and lots of experts spruiking how they should do things on Facebook. And she knew as a solo business, having the money to employ someone to manage her social media was a challenge. And many experts she found really had no clue, even on the basics of how to set up safely and use the platform. Chantelle got her certificate five in small business and started niching on Facebook. And she knew from her own experience using Facebook to generate leads 
for free was and is possible by understanding how the platform and its algorithms work. Now, as a Facebook strategist for over the last four years, Chantel has been able to show loads of other business owners, including myself, how to use Facebook to market and grow their businesses. And many people do not really understand the power of Facebook, and that's how Chantel empowers them to use it effectively for their business. Chantel's target audience is other micro and small businesses just like hers, solo operators with one or two or even three employees and not a huge big marketing budget. And the key to Chantel's work as a Facebook strategy, strategist rather, is customer service, a simplified approach to one-on-one -on -one training that empowers small business to manage their own Facebook profiles. Now, we're going to be talking obviously, all things Facebook with Chantel. And I have to say that when I first went into business, Facebook was my platform and my learning and understanding came directly from Chantel. So it's really lovely to circle back and talk to her again about Facebook. Mind you, my business has moved on and Facebook is no longer a major part of my strategy. However, for many, many people and businesses, Facebook's where they start and where they continue. So hello, Chantel. Welcome to Everyday Business. Hey, Tony. Thanks so much for having me. Um, it's really quite um, a, a wonderful thing to have you live on the show and be able to talk to you um, because I know that once I started implementing the things that Chantal Tell taught me way back then. And this is going back uh, three years ago when I just had a book. That's all I had. No business, just a book. And the things that Chantel taught me actually worked um, very well and got me started as well on my entrepreneurial uh, journey. Chantel, you've now been working in Facebook for a substantial amount of time. And I'm wondering uh, if you can describe for the audience why it's important to start with a Facebook page slash profile for you and your business. And let's talk a little bit about getting the foundations right. Yeah, thanks so much, Tony. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. And it's been absolutely awesome to watch you grow uh, in your confidence. Um, I'm going to share with everyone that Tony did her first Facebook Live with me. We literally were in a meeting together and she was so nervous about it. Um, and I said, let's just do it. And we, we went live and we did like a selfie Facebook Live together interview. And that was probably the first time that it was, was the first time that you did a live um you know yeah. and now look at you presenting online confidently so it's been an absolute pleasure just watching you you know grow <laughs> um and you know facebook was a part of that for you because it would have given you the confidence Absolutely. and the skills and and part of the strategy that we always spoke about was that a book isn't going to make you money <laughs> it's like a book is only part of a part of the bigger picture, but there is such a, yes. a much more comprehensive strategy in there because books do not make you money. Um, and you were able to create an opportunity, um, you know, be able to go out onto Facebook, create those opportunities. I still remember when you called me and you said that you'd landed this other opportunity. Um, and from yes. there, it just grew and grew and grew. And that's the power of Facebook, it's the power of social media. It's not just about having a page or a profile. It's not just about posting, you know, that you went to the beach today <laughs> and yesterday you helped a client. There's such a much more comprehensive strategy that people need to include. And it does start with the foundations, for sure. Absolutely. Um, I still, Chantelle, I still, that moment that you made... <laughs> So we've been, Chantelle have been talking to me about the power of live streaming. And you have to understand that back then, I I am still an introvert, but I was incredibly introverted and shy and fearful about this thing called live and going live on Facebook. But Chantelle made me do it in the moment, which actually removed some of the fear. And I learned from that, that 
it that you can teach people how to overcome their fears and it's actually become part of the fundamentals of what I teach the clients that I work with about fear that you will feel fearful and that you need to just feel the fear and do it anyway because it's not about you it's about your message and it's about the way that you help people again fundamentally that was one of the first things that uh, Chantel told me so going back to the fundamentals of Facebook what do businesses and people need to consider and get right as a foundation level for working on Facebook well, um, and, and you touched on it there as well. Number one is it's about who you are because there's a strategy for everyone. So introverts and extroverts, there is a strategy for everyone. And I think sometimes people hold back or they're too scared to go forward because they think that they have to be this extrovert or they've got to share their whole life story. Yes. But you don't. Like when you understand how the platforms work and you understand how you want to be perceived online and you understand how to use the privacy settings, you can have a public or private profile or you can have a private profile yes. but only share some public stuff. So when you truly understand how the platforms work um, and understand how you want to be online and have that personal branding, that can really help. But also having the confidence behind it. And when you have a coach and someone to hold your hand through it, um, it certainly does make the, um, the whole process a lot easier. Um, so number two is usually when it comes to the foundations, it's then about business branding. So, you know, we talk about mm -hmm. personal branding and privacy and how you want to be established. But then we talk about the business as well, sharing your business backstory and looking at the bigger picture. Because like we discussed with your one, it's like a book is not going to make yeah. you money. So, how, you know, what is the big picture? What is the the um, your, um, you know, what are you actually selling? Who's actually prepared to buy it? Where are they hanging out online? How are we going to effectively communicate it? How do we take money, you know, online? Um, and how do we get a yes? So there's, you know, it's understanding that whole bigger picture. So I often say the only BS you need in your marketing is a business strategy. And so many people will come to me and they don't have that right. What they think they do, what they think they need to do and what they really need to do are two different things. Um, so it's really be able to help them with that business, that business branding and that strategy. Number three is, and this is absolutely an awesome takeaway. So if everyone just does this one thing today, you will learn so much. But if you go and you do a competitor's analysis, so go onto social media, go to Facebook, go mm -hmm. to websites, go everywhere and find other people that are doing social media relatively well, go on and have a look at everything from how they position themselves, how they use the profiles, the type of reviews they get, the offers that they are selling, um, how they take payments online. Um, you will learn so much from that. And I must say this, it's not so that you can copy them. It's so that you can no. differentiate yourself from them. So it is all about you establishing yourself differently, your point of difference, your unique selling point, um, and really niching yourself outside of what everyone else is doing. And that's the purpose of that competitor's analysis. Um, so number four would be then establishing a professional online presence. So I always talk about going and doing the five finger stalk. So if you go and grab your phone yes. and you go five ways through on your personal profile, your business page, even through your website. And if you pretended yes. like, if you went, if I didn't know me, who I was and what I was selling, does this make sense? And look at it com with complete virgin eyes. And if you do that, you'll see that, you know, if you've been sharing your coffee photos for the last five days and you scroll through, that is how you're going to be seen to a stranger online. So it's really mm. important that we have a professional online profile, that we do go in and stalk ourselves and see how we present and then go make sure that we do, that it is professional, that there is consistency with our branding, consistency with our key messaging. And to a stranger, we make sense. And to our right customer, yes, yes. we're going to get a yes. Um, and then I would say can tell, five, consistency yeah. is sorry, darling, consistency is incredibly important. I was just going to say um, that was one of the, the key things that you taught me as well was it didn't have to be perfect. It had to be consistent. So if you do something day in, day out, that consistency comes back to you in terms of uh, people knowing, liking and trusting you and your brand. And that was one of the other key points from when I work with you was about consistency. And I've carried that through 
the business today. So I consistently show up on these shows Thursdays every week, week in, week out, apart from Christmas when we have a little bit of a break. But yes, consistency is important, isn't it? Yes, I think it comes down to, and actually number five is this, it's about clarity and confidence. If you have confidence in what you're doing, and clarity in what you're doing, it makes, well, clarity makes it really easy for you to be consistent, you know, and mm-hmm. confidence yes. really helps you to be consistent. A lot of the time people go, oh, well, if I post, you know, twice this month, everyone's going to see it. Everyone's going to be upset because I'm spamming them. If you think of people like Gary V, how many platforms they've got, they post a hundred t- times a day paid yeah. and organically. And how many times would you run mm-hmm. across a post? maybe once a month. So when you understand how the platform works, it doesn't work like that. Um, so it's really important mm. to understand that um, relationships take time. Always talk about relationships. It's like, you know, it's like dating. It takes time. And if you just phone somebody, you know, met someone on Tinder and message them once a month or phone them once a month, they're not going to take you seriously. Um, their level of commitment and your level of commitment is not going to be there. So if you're really passionate about what you do and you work on that clarity and you work on that confidence, you can show up, be consistent, develop those relationships, and you'll be a lot closer to getting that yes and making those sales. Yeah, yeah, which is important for small businesses. Um, Chantel, quite a lot has changed on the platform since even we worked together. How do you keep track with those changes, you know, changes to algorithms, changes to the way things set up, and now there's the metaverse, metaverse, meta, whatever it is that they're doing now. How do you keep track with those? I think if you understand the value behind the company or what their actual mission or purpose is, you'll know that there'll always be some slight changes around, you know, but the, the primary vision of what they have is going to make this is going to make sense. Most people yeah. just don't read their notifications. <laughs> like if you just read your notifications, it's kind of like Big Bang Theory with Penny where she's constantly mm-hmm. tapping on the dashboard of her car because the red light keeps flashing. You know, Facebook will pop up and say, Facebook groups is changing. This is the new update. And everybody just clicks crosses and don't read, you know, don't doesn't read through it. But you uh, should read those, shouldn't you? You should read them. So here's the thing. If you're going to use something as a tool in your business, especially Mm. to generate leads, my goodness, you need to learn it. It's not hard. Mm. You you know, I have no, no, I'm a non-techie person. I am not actually a marketing person. I'm a hyperactive personal trainer by trade. If I can learn to do it, everyone else can learn to do it. They make it really yeah. simple because they want you to use the platform. So it's not that hard. Right. So read notifications. And also Facebook will also email you. They'll email you any updates that come through and literally just skim read some of the stuff. But usually the pop-ups that they have inside Facebook are significant enough for you to read. To tell you something's changing, take note, figure out what it is and make it work for you um Chantel with the changes that have happened in Facebook over the the last few years is it possible for businesses to still grow and market using Facebook and Facebook alone so you know 93% of small businesses choose Facebook as their primary platform okay a lot of businesses will say you need to be on LinkedIn but there is much less activity and much less people actually on LinkedIn. So when you look at um, how many people, you know, how many fish there are, it's like going in and fishing in a location where there's one or two fish or fishing in a location where there's a lot more fish. So I think at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, you've got to work out who your audience is and where they hang out and how you're going to communicate to them. Google is the number one platform. So you cannot disregard Google. Um, And of course, YouTube is is owned by Google. So at the end of the day, I like to talk about my little triangle, my little power triangle. And for me, it is always Google, your website and Facebook. And if you keep sending people from Facebook to your website, from your website to Facebook, from Google to your website, from Google to your Facebook, and you've got that power triangle going, um, you're going to Mm -hmm. significantly increase your online visibility. Um, And other ways Mm -hmm. to do that is to backlink, to do, you know, collaborations, You know, when we do this podcast, my name goes on your website, your name goes on my website. So that helps with Google. And then we mention it on Facebook. So that helps on Facebook. So it comes down to how you use it. 
You know, if yeah. we just did this podcast and we did nothing with it, nothing would happen. So it's about one of my favorite F words. It's about following through. So don't half ask yes. things, follow that thing through. If we're going to do this podcast, That's right. well, it's got to go out to your emails. It's got to go out on Facebook. It's got to go out on, on um, onto your website and across all your socials. And, you know, you've got to completely maximize the opportunity. That's right. And, and as I said in the intro, not only we do we do all of that, but in addition to that, the shows all go on to Binge Networks USA, Hero Go Networks USA and the Tony TV channel app. So that way we are trying to get Chantel and Chantel's message out to as many people as is humanly possible. Um, and it also goes out as a separate uh, audio only podcast as well as a video. So um, it's about trying to leverage as many spaces and places as possible that people can hear your message. And Chantel's message is, is absolutely about helping people and helping people leverage Facebook. Um, so Chantel, we hear a lot about um, paid versus organic organizing promotion and growth. Can you explain for the audience what the difference and why it's important that we know that? So, I mean, I love this question. So I've now been doing this business for this business full time for the last six years. We do no paid yeah. advertising at all. Everything mm. that we do or the leads that we generate are 100% organic. And I work yeah. with, at the moment, at, at any given time, I've usually got about 100 clients that I'm working with at any given time. And out of those 100, there's probably about 95 that are organic. The other 5%, they will be doing paid advertising. And they're usually product-based businesses who have shops. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the yeah. day, it's about getting sales. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but for smaller product-based businesses that are niche-based or have one item, organic's okay. But for your bigger, who's just selling bigger things, you know, you have to go down the advertising route. So here's the thing. If you haven't got your personal profile set up properly, your business pro profile set up properly, if you have, and most people don't, they come to me and they go, oh, I know how to use yes. Facebook, it's all set up properly. Every time it's not, every single time it's not. Um, I will always find something that's broken. So if it's not set up yes. properly, if you imagine it being a car, okay, and you get into a car mm -hmm. and the car doesn't have petrol in it, instead someone's put diesel in it, uh, the car's yeah. missing, I don't know, a pop and a radiator and something else, it's not going to be efficient. So it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you put a souped up exhaust in the back, it's not going to mm -hmm. work, which is kind of like Facebook no. ads. So if you went and bought the most flashy, like souped, I don't even know if you call that here in Australia because that might be my South African, but like a vroom kind I of... I know what you mean. You know what I mean, good. Um, my partner's yeah. from New Zealand. So we go, is that South African, New Zealand, Australian? <laughs> um, so if you go put this big thing in, it doesn't matter how shiny it is. It doesn't matter how fast it says it's going to go. If you've put diesel in it and if you don't have the right wheels on it, if you haven't, it, does, mm. it doesn't matter what you, how much money you put behind it, it's not going to work. So yes, people can yeah. achieve results organically. The reason most people think they can't, and I'm not going to bullshit uh -huh. you, the most re yeah, yeah. reason is because they're looking for a quick magic pill and it doesn't exist in business. There is no magic pill. Mm. Unfortunately, what we hear no. often is laptop lifestyle. Oh, easy. I just work one hour a day and my ads make yeah, money. No. It doesn't work. Speak to the real people in no. business that are really making money and they will tell you that, mm. um, you know, that it doesn't quite work like that. So there is no magic pill. So people are looking for magic pills. It doesn't exist. Um, if you want... Yeah. Some businesses just don't have the money to gamble on advertising because you have to pay That's someone right. to manage it for you. There are experts mm -hmm. in it with the algorithms changing all the time. You have to make sure that you need you experts, don't you, Chantel? You need absolutely experts to need do experts. That. So you've got to be prepared and have money to pay those people, and they're going to test it for about three months, and only then you might start yes. making money. So some business owners yes. just simply are not in a position to be able to do that. So for me, it's about if you invest in yourself, you get the foundations right, you get the basics right, you know how to manage the platform, you can go and spend 20 minutes a day and you can generate leads and inquiries if you have skills, strategy, and a system. And those are the three things that I've yes. worked out are the fundamentals for business owners to have. If you have got skills, you know what to do, so now you're going to have more fun. 
If you have a strategy, yes. it means you wake up every day and you know exactly what to do because you've got a roadmap. Exactly what you're going to do. Yep, you've got you've got Google Maps and Google's telling you yeah. exactly where to go. <laughs> you're not just winging it yes. and, you know, you know where the petrol stations are, yes. you know where you can stop for a toilet break, you know, you know where you're going um, as opposed to just winging it. And with systems, if you've got a system, well, guess what? You're not going to spend your life online because you've got a system. Correct. You know what to do. Yeah, mm. so... Um, Fantastic. So many people are generating uh, leads for free online, but it's not just posting on their Organically. page. Organically. Organically. You've got to have skills, strategies, and a system. You've got to be prepared to show up consistently, spend 20 minutes a day at least online marketing your business, and you should enjoy it. You should not enjoy it. You should enjoy that. Yes. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's the key, isn't it? it if anyone tells you that there's a quick fix, um, don't believe them. And I have to say that Chantel never sold me a quick fix. She sold me a strategy, taught me the skills, and I was off and running then. Um, Chantel, so you don't do any paid Facebook ads whatsoever. Yours is all organic, and that's what you teach your clients as well. Exactly, 100%. That's exactly what we do. A lot of people come to us um, and a lot of Facebook ads companies will come to us and they will ask us oh. to help them because what I do helps their ads convert better. So, for example, um, I, uh, I had a guy a couple of days ago, I think he owns a decking company, and he said he's paying $5,000 mm. a month on uh, advertising and management um, and he's only getting 17% back of, uh, in sales. And when I went onto his page, incorrectly set up, the banner wasn't, uh, it didn't effectively communicate what he did in his, his business. Your, your Facebook banner is so important because within three seconds, someone will stay or they'll go. They had about a five-step process before somebody could actually engage their services and people do not have time for that. It needs to be a one or no. two-step process of getting them off social media and turning them into a client. Um, and again, mm. always related to that dating thing. Imagine if you just went back and forth a thousand yes. times, people get bored. Um, so, yeah. so what I do can optimize people's Facebook strategies because, um, and, and of course they're generating leads organically as well. So it'll bring down their ads. Yes. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good for small business. And, you know, we've had a really tough couple of years. Let's face it. It's been not fun. Yeah, um, look, for me, you know, when I started out a couple of years back, I was really focused on five to six figure businesses. Uh, but during COVID, I found that I started working with a lot more six to seven figure businesses who wanted to make yeah. an impact in the world. So although they were selling a product or a service, they wanted to reach more people, they wanted to make an impact, and they didn't want to outsource their voice to someone else. So they would rather, yeah. um, in a lot of the cases, they would rather empower the husband and the wife and maybe the daughter who works in the company or maybe they've got a team yes. member there and they say well how can we do this because when we outsource it to someone else we lose our voice we lose our message mm. we lose the impact that yeah. we want to make um and we don't want to do that so it's not for them it wasn't even about the money of outsourcing it was the fact that they are yeah. really passionate about what they do you know blogs podcasts how does that all fit into their strategy um yeah Definitely. Um, Chantel, we, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about content. And um, in talking about content, what works, what doesn't, and why content is so important? Every business owner has to know how to effectively communicate in the written word what they do to get a yes and make a sale. Okay, yes. I cannot say that enough. And I hope I, I said that so beautifully that it makes sense because that's the job. So when business owners yeah. come, they like to use big words, they like to use complicated words, and they often use the what they're delivering. They don't mm. communicate the solution or the outcome to the customer of what they're actually doing. So part of the process that we work on is coming up with key messages, mission statements, and key messages, mission statements, uh, and a content bundle. Because once yeah. a content bucket, once you have a content bucket and your key messages and your mission statement, all you have to do is duplicate that across the world. You just wake up, you yes. look inside your bucket and you pull it out. <laughs> and you go, that makes yeah. sense to what I'm hoping to achieve right now. 
So, you know, when we talk to people, it's really easy because we can sort of, you know, you've got your body and your mannerisms and people can go, yep, I like that or yes. don't like that. Or, but when you write it, it's, it's a bit more difficult. And a lot of people struggle to write as well. So it's a new skill. It's another skill that you've got to learn how to do. Yeah. Um, but, but once you work out what are the things that you're continually saying and are passionate about and what are your clients interested in, um, so become a big stalker of your clients. If you know what their pain points are, what they're interested in, um, again, dating, right? If you met a guy yeah. and you're like so into this guy and you're like, oh, I'm so into him, you're going to go stalk him. You're going to see if he's into footy or if he's into cricket. Maybe he's into tiddlywinks and you're not into that. You know, you're going to go and <laughs> check them out so that the next yes. time you have a date, you can go in there and you can, you know, use the right words mm -hmm. and use the right lingo and get yourself across the line. And it's exactly the same when it comes to your client. So become a really good stalker so that you know how to communicate them. But if you have a content bucket, literally just journal it, write it down, listen to your client's problems, listen to um, how you've helped them, uh, you know, and spend time listening and writing those words down. And eventually you'll just have a big book of words that you can tap into yes. that you can create content in. The good news is, is that social media is social. So when I look back and I go, well, how did little old me, personal trainer, hyperactive, no marketing background, no tech experience, <laughs> like not that way inclined at all, how did I do it? I reckon it's because it's social media, which means all I had to do was go, if I can continue to be social online, um, this is really easy. So in fact, I actually had to learn the sales yes. part of it. So social versus sales. Yes. Some business owners are too social. Hey, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look what I ate, look what I wore today, look what I dressed. Do you like this outfit? Should I wear that outfit? And they're just too social, okay? Me, me, me is what I like to call them. Um, and again, if you went on a date with someone and they just went, me, 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 you would get a fat yeah. no. Wouldn't get another date, right? Um, yeah. So, the, but this, and some people then are too salesy. Buy this, buy this, buy this. You'll get this, this, this. It's discounted. This is the price. And it's cold and it's salesy and it's the old marketing way of this is it, this is the deliverables, this is what it is. And you'll get a fat no, okay? The thing is, is that you've got to build the no, like, and trust. So incredibly important yes. that you continue to tell your story, continue to share what you're passionate about, talk about your why, um, engage your audience, ask them questions. What are you interested in? What would you like to hear more of in your business, not just in your clothing? And um, <laughs> and create content that your customers are interested in. So whatever they're interested in, if they are interested in how to get fast and free results online, we'll then provide content on that. Yes. If they want to know how to outsmart the algorithm, provide content on that. Yes. If they want to know how to, um, you know, how, how, uh, what content to create, then create content on that. So deliver that content to them. The trick is to always tell them the what to do, never the how to do, because Again, we want people to invest in us. And if people yeah. just keep giving everything away for free, they will never be respected like the lady on the corner, okay? So it's really important that if they want to go any further, they've got to pay you for that. So it's always the what, never the how. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So some other things that you can do, share success stories because people don't just want to hear about you talking about yourself, which is important. Um, but they want to they want to hear about the results that you've had from other people. They want you to share statistics. Yes. So we've got a whole bunch of left brain people out there, and left brain people yes. need statistics, and they need numbers. Quotes. They need numbers. They need quotes. They need. Um, so, for example, Harvard University says that ninety three percent of business owners yeah. prefer so, uh, Facebook as their primary platform. So they need someone else to give them the statistic to say that that's right to in order to get a yes. Um, so motivational quotes, success stories, testimonials. Um, what else have we got? Uh, offer solutions to their problems. Share other people's yes. content. And you do need to talk about your offering. But we don't talk about the yes. deliverables of your offering. We talk about the outcome of the client of using the offering. And that's where people go yes. can go a bit wrong sometimes. But it's also about talking about what you've been able to achieve for a particular client in a particular time frame. So um, in, in your case, Chantel, that's about 
I worked with such and such a business and this is what they achieved in six months of doing following my strategy it's it it doesn't have to be complicated does it It, the the simpler and easier it is for the public to consume the better it's going to be yes definitely I mean I know if you go if you go to my website you'll have a look we've got testimonials but then we've got um yeah uh, we've got story monials as well so video Uh testimonials So video testimonials, yes. we've got written testimonials, and then we have sh- screenshots of clients. So I will text mm. my clients in Facebook Messenger and go, how is that yes. going? How is everything? How was your result this week? And they'll email back and go, oh, I just got a $3.2,000 client off that one funnel that we just created. Um, and I will yes. take a screenshot and that will go up on the website as well because that becomes uh, social proof. Definitely. Um, when you talk about social proof, can you tell the audience what social proof means in terms of Facebook? So social proof is, um, and also user-generated content, is all about mm-hmm. getting other people to spook you. So other people to validate yes. you, other results to show. Um, so it's third-party proof um, of yes. things that work. So for example, even now me and you having this conversation and you validating what I've done, I think I messaged you at one point and said, Tony, can you just send me a, and I think Tony's screenshot is um, is on my website. So I I think it's on, it is actually on my website talking about the results. And all it is, is having that social proof means we can use that in social proof to give credit, to give, to get credibility and to build up yes. the know, like, and trust so people can go, well, you know what? This person's not BSing me. Um, yeah, I can see they've that actually done the got, yeah, yeah. Um, Chantelle, you help businesses um, with their profiles and pages. How do you actually do that? Is it one-on-one? Is it in a group setting? Is it an online program? How do you do that? Still, my most absolutely popular program is my one-on-one consultancy. Um, And that mainly is because I work with people who want to sit down and, you know, even on a Zoom and go backwards and forwards and get feedback and, you know, have the practical support and the phone calls and the emails. And, you know, everyone is online now. It's all these online programs and everybody downloads these $47, $97, $127 programs and never does them, right? So people often come and they go, I go, right, you can have those programs. I have all those online programs. They're all there. But most people go, you know what? I just want someone to tell me what to do. Give Get me with feedback. with me, show me, me on and work through it. And work mm. through it with me. Um, mm. And, you know, so many people just don't do that anymore. So I'm, I'm lucky enough and I'm so passionate yeah. about it as well to continue to be able to offer my one-on-one consultancy. Um, but we do often hold group programs um, as well. So they usually run in the okay. school terms um, because I'm conscious yes. of, of parents. So the next one will be yeah, starting, yeah. for example, in February next year, which will run the school term. Yeah. We will run a program and do it in a group. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know for my learning style, it was very helpful to sit with Chantel, uh, laptop open, my laptop open, Chantel's laptop open, and she would just teach me, go in here, do this, do that, and I would have a notebook down and Chantel would provide all the information in worksheets and stuff. But for me and the way that I learn sitting one-on-one with Chantel and the laptop and physically doing it and putting notes in my notebook helped ingrain that information into my brain um, and make sure that it stuck there and that I did those things. Um, Chantelle, you've also, um, you've had a busy year, obviously, because you've also written a book. What's your book called? (laughs) So I wrote um, my Facebook formula, which is a ultimately a planner, because every time I sat down with my clients and I'm like, well, that's a template, that's a template, that's a template. Um, And if you want to simplify your life, every time you do something multiple times, just automate that process or create it into a duplicated document. So I created all these documents Mm. and I got it all into Canva created this planner and thought, well, you know what, now people can literally just go through and work 
through it because I'm a paper and notes girl uh, and you are too. Yes. So you can see yes. paper and notes. Yes. That's how I learn. Yes. So it's interactive and you can learn and you can go through the process. So I've created all these templates yes. and it literally will take people through the exact formula that I used myself in my own business um, and the exact formula that I teach and work through with my clients. So if they go through and they journal and they brain dump and they work through that, it's they will the be same able thing. to come up with a um yeah well i'm not going to say the same thing because you don't have the facebook well, it's a bit more, i was going to say it's a bit better when the one-on-one's better because you actually got Chantel right there and you can go ah uh, i don't get that can you explain it again or can you actually show me how that works i don't quite get it yet so that's the difference yeah. um Chantel, where's the book available uh they can go on to amazon it is on amazon.com yes. and .com.au um not sure it, you'll have the link i know you've got someone there doing the link yes i've got the link <laughs> i was just gonna say <laughs> the link for everyone listening will be in the chat box as chantelle and i are speaking payo will put the link to chantelle's book in the chat box right now and it will also be with this interview wherever you're watching the interview it'll also be there um chantelle uh, so the book is made up of all your formulas and templates to help maximize Facebook. Do you, before I go, I've got, um, we've got a little bit more time left and I've got a few more questions, but I wanted to know um, from your perspective, you've been working so closely with Facebook. What do you think the future of Facebook looks like? How do you see Meta working out in terms of Facebook? And you might have you might not have a defined idea about this, but I thought I'd ask it anyway. What we need to understand is that they're a business, okay? And businesses mm. want to make money, um, and lots Mark Zuckerberg of money. is lots of money, so they're always going to be asking you to advertise, okay? But uh, they okay. are—they're always going to be asking you to advertise because that's how they make their yes. money, okay? And they're always yes. going to tell you that organic doesn't work because they want you to spend money. So we, we've, we've got to be yes. realistic about that. So I've done a lot yeah. of research in Meta and, and you know, I've, I've listened to the Gary V. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg interview yes. that they had, and I did write a blog on it yeah. as well, which should be on my website. Yes. And yep. in there, it just explains that at the end of the day, Facebook is all about communication, being able to communicate to people and to try mm. and make it as realistic or as engaging as possible um, and meta right. is really about it's kind of like virtual apps that are coming out so it is going to huh. change things because you know when I started my Facebook strategy business everyone said to me what if Facebook goes under and I said well one of my strategies is always create a business off Facebook Facebook's just a vehicle so when Facebook shut down yes. they shut down this year and they shut down about two three years ago all yes, the beauty salons that had their appointments that were done in Facebook, they didn't know whether or not someone was coming in for a perm or a blow dry mm -hmm. or a color because all their appointments were sitting on Facebook. So that's never one of my strategies I teach. It's always about being able to get people off it's Facebook. Journal. Facebook's just a vehicle. You've got to be able to get people off. So mm -hmm. Facebook is a vehicle in my business and I have a strategy for it, but I do not put all my eggs in one basket. It's incredibly important we don't yeah. do that in case it blows up yes um because yes. you know it is owned by someone else but when yeah. it comes to these new apps which is pretty cool because i you know obviously i come from the health wellness and fitness industry mm -hmm. people can basically download an app and this is how they're making their money and they can have subscriptions they can have go into an app they can put on a, a virtual assist you know a, a, they call it a vr unit and yes. they can basically yes. run on the spot and be with a trainer and exercise and have their tr so be offline but the whole thing can be interactive right. and it can feel 100 realistic and they have obviously the money that they're making is from selling all these things to be able to make those things happen and the software behind mm -hmm. all of that so you know if we put our head in the sand and go i don't want to learn you know all those people years ago said i don't want to learn yeah, yes. facebook then when covid yes. happened i was inundated because anybody who <laughs> thought about doing it and went no, 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 you know, I'll just, I'll just forget it. I don't need to use it in my business. They suddenly all called me and realized, well, they do need to know. So we can't yeah. put our head in the sand. Whatever is coming, just explore, go watch, you know, go watch the interview yes. so you have an understanding of it. And then just ask yourself, 
is this something that I need to incorporate into my business? Is it relevant to me and is it relevant to my audience? And that's the question you need to ask. Um, I have got a lot of personal trainers and a lot of them don't have money to have a website and they are saving yes. and they're desperate to have a website. And I'm like, you actually don't need to run a website. Okay. I opened my center just using um, social media and other free platforms. So, yes, you know, you need to ask yourself, do I really need that thing or do I just want it? Um, and am I going to yeah. enjoy managing it? And if I bring this into my business, am I going to stay informed in it? Am I going to stay informed in it it's consistent in it and am i going to yes. manage it effectively to its greatest potential because the amount mm. of people that are paying for software in their business that they're not even using is insane yeah it's more yes. about getting what you have right and working yeah yeah and you and obviously you can do that so people that connect with you and you and that you work with you can give them that capability and they don't necessarily have to do much else your example about the personal trainer um and not having a website so they can for those small businesses that are actually either just starting out or um and when you're starting out there is a distinct lack of funds um and uh, what I was going to say is that if you that little amount of money that you invest with an expert like Chantel will play out tenfold as your business grows. So sometimes when you're starting out, you're like website, social media, what do I do? Well, why not go with something that's free and easy to set up and that you can leverage until you get the income that you want and build the website? Because websites are, let's face it, expensive. And you've got to upkeep them, you've got to manage them, you've got to have the right script, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Something like Facebook will deliver great results for the majority of people and businesses without the angst of uh, outlaying oodles and oodles of cash. Um, Chantel, you said um, before that you didn't use Facebook for your um, appointments. Um, I'm curious to know what app do you use that integrates with Facebook that you can book appointments? Yeah, definitely don't use Facebook's appointments setting. Remember, they're always going to want you to use their stuff. Yes. But that means they own yes. your assets and they own your leads and your inquiries. So I'm not a big fan yeah. of that. For me, it's always about getting mm. people off. So, I mean, things like something like Acuity integrates really well with Facebook. Yes. You can have yes. one appointment for free on Acuity. But getting people to, mm. you know, before any of that, I just used to say private message me. And I would have a call yes. and I'd book them in for an appointment. You know, when you're starting yes. out in business, sometimes people just want all these big shiny light things, but we can work up to and those you don't things. need them. You do not need mm -hmm. them. When I first started out, I had none of that. I had no website. I had no appointment mm -hmm. thing at all. I just manually did it. DM yes. me, PM me, book it into the calendar, yes. you know, take payment, um, you know, but something like Stripe or Square is really easy to take payment yes. online. Uh, you can use a platform. Canva has a, a link tree now yes. that you create, and a website. So if you're going to spend money anywhere, spend money on Canva because that's freaking amazing and yes. you get so much. I was just going to say, little. Chantel, um, that was one of the other things that um, you first started me on um, when I started out with Facebook was to get Canva. And I had the unpaid version of Canva for the longest time. But what it does is it enables you to create brand specific posts and graphics and all sorts of things. Um, it's also an Australian owned company, which is a big, I don't know, that, that just makes me glad that I'm an Aussie, but it's free. If you have the base stuff and that's all you need to do beautiful posts that post onto Facebook. Um, and then, of course, you can create stuff for Instagram and Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. But Canva is a great tool to help you 
manage your social media and in particular your posts and any of the graphics that you want to use within your business. So if you want to design a logo, you want to design a flyer, you want to do a brochure, all of those things are you have capacity for in Canva. So it's a great conversa- uh, combination, rather, uh, Facebook and um, a Canva as starting tools to use in your business, isn't it, Chantal? Yep, yeah, 100%. And uh, definitely, and as I said, now you can actually have a website, you can have a landing page, you can even put in a payment link. They've created their own link mm. tree. Uh, you can do uh, presentations, you can create brochures. Um, all my animated yes. gifs and little videos that I make are all done in Canva. Um, you know, just yep. have branding consistency, have the same key messaging, mm. and make mm-hmm. sure that it's outcome focused with everything that you do on social media. The strategy is, why am I doing this to achieve what? Um, And it's one thing. It's not visibility. I'm not doing this for visibility. No, it isn't. It's to generate a lead. Well, what's the lead? To generate generate someone, to generate a call or to generate someone to book in for a webinar. So it has to be one very specific reason that you're creating every post that you do. Um, and then on top of it, it's not just about creating the, um, it's not just about creating content on that page and having that branding consistency, you have to have a growth yeah. strategy. And the growth strategy is what other opportunities or things am I going to do out on Facebook to pull them back to me, mm. like a podcast, yes. like doing a webinar, a competition, um, what other things have we done? Uh, surveys. Surveys. Um, Facebook groups, polls, mm. uh, joint ventures, collaborations, challenges. Yeah. And they are all yes. things that you can do to pull people onto your page because your page just doesn't grow. Some people have got, you know, no. on their <laughs> Facebook page and they're still creating content thinking that someone's going to find them and they're posting once a month. It's about setting up the page correctly, making sure that your content's consistent yes. and it's meaningful and effectively communicates. Um, but then on top of it, you've got to go out and pull people in towards that page. It's not going to happen mm-hmm. on its own. Chantel, if there's business owners listening that um, would like to do more with their Facebook, um, it doesn't, you work with um, the employees of businesses as well in teaching them. So you might have, say, an admin staff member who could be utilised in um, social media and, and setting up Facebook. So you do that work as well, don't you, Chantel? Yeah, so as I said, in the last couple of years, what's ended up happening mm. is a lot of businesses have come to me and said, look, I have uh, a virtual assistant or I have an assistant or I have someone in my business who's been given the yes. task of managing our social media. Um, and often it's yeah. wives. I remember a printing company, mm. the husband and wife were fighting all the time because the wife was trying so yes. hard to do the social media. The husband was going, well, this yeah. is ridiculous. It's not even working. And they were sleeping in separate bedrooms. So he always laughed because he said, no. I, I actually got his marriage back together. Um, but what happened was I said, it's not the wife's fault. She wants to help, but she really doesn't have the skills, the strategy or the system. And I said to him, so if she can invest in herself and her ability to do it, she's going to enjoy doing it. It's going to get a result. And yeah. you guys... You're not going to be saying you, you, you. You're just going to be going Chantel now, which is much better. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So yes. a lot of the times we'll, we'll go because the other thing is, is that a lot of the administrators or especially with virtual assistants, they can do cookie cutter and fluffy because they do the same mm. messaging and same content for all businesses. And it's not their fault. That's what they know. Yes. They don't know yes. how to come up with an income producing strategy for a business. And that's the difference between having a pretty profile and a profile that makes money. So once the business owner has the strategy and they've got the strategy and they go, right, this is what we're doing, they can now hand that strategy over to them, give them the skills and then manage that. And if that person leaves, they still have the strategy and give it to them and they can oversee it. Because a lot of the time, um, for example, the, the client I had this morning, they've got someone who they're paying to do their email marketing. And I had a look yes. at this and they're not reporting on the emails weekly. So they're not looking at open rates. They're not looking at clicks. They're not looking at the money that's coming in through the emails. And I said, all you've got to do is send her an email and say, send me a weekly report that gives me this, this, and this. That will now get her to start looking 
at the results and then yes. set a target yes. for the week. And yeah. they're like, that's brilliant. Yeah. And I went, yes, it is. Yeah. So, but we've got to be able to give whoever's helping us direction. Yes. And yes. that strategy. Definitely. Chantelle, before we run out of time quickly, you have a special offer for the audience today. Can you tell us what that is? Tony, I can't. I've got no idea what it is. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. Well, let me tell you, audience, the special offer for today is 10% off the Facebook Mastery 101 program. 10% off for the audience today. We have the link in the chat box. It's also on the website and it will be attached to this interview wherever you're watching it. So it's the Facebook 101 program with Chantel. 10% off for anyone who's watching this program today. Um, Chantel, we're actually out of time. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a pure delight talking to you again and catching up, even if it is online in front of the world. Um, I wish you and your family a wonderful Christmas. Keep helping people with Facebook. And thank you for the work that you did with me real early in the piece. Um, I can't tell you how valuable that time spent with uh, Chantelle was at the very beginning of my business incredibly helpful and a lot of the strategies and knowledge I still use day to day in lots of different ways across my business which has grown to quite a big deal now <laughs> and I started with Chantelle so there you go Chantelle Girardi thank you so much for being on the Everyday Business Show we'll have a wonderful Christmas um, enjoy those kids being off school oh, your kids finish school off yep, school? they're in high school now. So, yep. yep. Yes. So that look forward to the Christmas holidays with them uh, not going to school. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone, and have an amazing Christmas and New Year. Thanks, Chantel. Um, that's your lot for this week on the Everyday Business Show with Chantel Girardi. Don't forget to check out Chantel's website and all of her information. She has some fantastic resources and she is a wonderful person to work with. So if you're struggling with Facebook, get in contact with Chantel today. And that, my lot, my uh, is your lot for this week. And we will be back next week again on Everyday Business Show with Tony Lontis. Bye for now. Thank you for watching and listening to Tony TV. For more inspirational stories, join us next week. Bye for now.